uh, beast in my videos I might come across sometimes as being pessimistic I'll admit that that's the way I come across that is not my motivation in actual fact I'm very optimistic and I'm quite serious about this because as a Christian I know where this is going if you are a Christian then there's nothing I can do for you. You know, that's what I do is the limit of my evangelism. But I believe. So, ultimately, what's going to happen is going to happen. You will get the Antichrist. People who won't take the mark of the beast will be dealt with, ostracised. It's going to be a hell on earth. And there's going to be. There ain't going to be any unbelievers when the Antichrist is here. But the optimism is because ultimately our man's coming around. Jesus Christ is coming back and we're out of here. That's it. So on on that level, of course I'm optimistic. You know, and if you, if you don't believe that, like I say, there's nothing I can do. But at least I've said it. I've put the message out there in my particular way and it's up to people to dismiss it as a lot of old crap and bunkum or accept it or not. It's a bit like if I've got an ice cream, an ice cream cone and you don't want it, then do you think by pinning you down, holding your head and forcing the ice cream cone down your throat is going to make you accept it? Of course not. And that's what religion's done a lot of the time including certain Christian denominations that have got nothing, nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It's there. You either take it, salvation, or you do. And if you do, you know where you're going to end up, you was told. Don't say you weren't. So on an optimistic level, yeah, I am optimistic because I know how this is going to end. It's, it's good for believers, not so good for uh, unbelievers. And that's that's your choice. That's your free will. So I am. Um, I am optimistic. I'm going through the narrow gate. It's the more difficult gate. There's a lot of people piling through the wide gate thinking it's easier. And that's that's the, literally, literally the road to nowhere. So anyway... Um, when, I'm, when I do these subjects sometimes, I come across as pessimistic and uh, that's just the way it is. Now there's a debate, I'm talking about this because there's going to be a de debate in Parliament on the 20th, as I understand it, where they're going to be talking about injuries and deaths caused by this. Okay, now I am optimistic about that and... First of all, I don't know whether Bridgen's going to be involved with this one, I doubt it. But I don't trust him. I don't trust him as far as I could pick him up and drop kick him. I know a lot of you do, but I don't. He's like Russell Brandon as much as, for whatever reason, he's been making the right kind of noises. He's been making agreeable statements which support what we've been saying, what's happening. But that does that mean I, I trust him? No. And I don't. And if you do, then I'm very happy for you. But that, that's, the, that's my stance. So I don't know whether he's going to be involved. But whoever's involved, the reason I am optimistic is because we're playing a rigged game here. It's rigged. It is. And I think if these questions are being asked in Parliament, they're going to be done in such a way and involving the, the sort of people that are really going to be fair. Now, I've got a good friend, and she's been involved in the Truth Movement for uh, a quite a while, and she's been invited, she organises things, and she's been invited on a number of mainstream um, terrestrial television uh, uh, debates, and she's never took up the offer, and the reason for that was she's now full, and she's looked into what's expected. Now, it's going to be ruined, and organised and all that and it's just rigged really, there is there is no point it's literally a waste of time taking part 
that I'll just I've got it in 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 such a, a, a situation whereby they'll they won't allow proper full open and full debate. They've rigged it so it'll make you look like uh, a slack jawed, drooling, swivel eyed, tin foil -like nut job, and that's it. So it says, why bother getting in, why bother engaging in that? What's the point? Who does it serve? How's that going to help? You know, where's the gain in that? It's just a, literally a waste of time. And I think that's what's going to happen in Parliament. It's just it's going to be a joke. I, I think. I hope I'm wrong, as, as I always am. But. Um, I think what's going to happen in Parliament would be a bit like, imagine having a car crash and the other guy caused it, right? but he's the only one allowed to fill out the accident report to decide who gets the cash. Well, yeah, they're going to come off too well, am you? But yeah, he's the one who's done it, and I'll, I'll see it like that. So that's it. So if I seem pessimistic about it, is it any bloody wonder? Another thing I've got to say is, uh, over the last three years, I've been very scathing towards the Muslims, you know, the, the mass wearers, and I think it's justified. Yeah, you know, I did a video, a short video, uh, a while back, and I got some criticism for being a bully, and that won me motivation. But when people are scuttling round in uh, these muzzles, put it this way: if if I said, right, I'm going to wear a traffic cone on my head just in case a meteorite weighing 50 kilo comes flying down and hits me at 17,000 miles an hour, it'll offer me some protection having a traffic cone on my head. Well, it will. It will, until the point that my body vaporises as the bloody meteorite goes through it at a tremendous speed and energy. And the same with the masks, you know, my main objection was, that I keep saying this, they were normalising something that was just ridiculous. That would drag me into your psychosis. I don't want to know. Right? You, 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 the privacy around home, do what you want to do. It's ain't none of my business. But don't try to involve me in your stupid saftness, which is what it was. So I've been scathing towards them. And um, I'm ne neither proud or ashamed of it, it just it, it was what it was and sometimes you, you, you saw these eyes peeping out of the mask and they were, they were, they were empty you know and I had a sort of bloke to deliberately rip the mickey out of somebody you never know what the backstory is, you don't know whether they've got learning difficulties disabilities, you don't, you don't know so I had one of these who just rips the, the, the P for the sake of it and gets joy out of it, I'm not. But what was happening with the muzzles? I, I thought that was idiots and I, I think I was justified in taking that stance. Now that, that's been out of the last three years, but like everything else, things change. And generally I, I change my opinion, but I've seen one or two things that have made me change my opinion to certain people. Uh, my attitude has been adjusted and tweaked somewhat, not not entirely changed. I don't know one eye or anything like that. But I've noticed because I clock these things, I will watch and look and see what I can learn when I'm out. And I was um, at the traffic lights coming from the gym today, and there's a, a chemist on the traffic lights, and I was there for a while waiting. And this bloke come out, he'd be about my age, and the look of absolute fear in his eyes over the mask was appalling and it was just the look in his eyes it was the body language he was coshed down and defeated and I couldn't laugh at him that's, that's like laughing at somebody who's on the floor you, know, you pick them up even if you don't like them <laughs> and I've seen this a couple of times over the last week or two I saw it coming out of the supermarket as I was going in till I did my shopping after the gym. And as I was going in, a woman was coming out. And it was this vacant, docile, alvine, fluoride, idiotic stare. It was absolute fear. And I think these are the only ones left over three years. I think all, all the for want of a better impression, all the dickheads don't wear the, the masks like they used to. 
but the ones that are still clinging onto it are the ones that are absolutely plugged in and wired into the mainstream media which is filling up with so much fear anguish anxiety and terror and i, I regardless of what i think of some people I, I don't think i'm that bad enough to to want to do that to anybody and i think it's appalling um moving on right hypothetical situation hypothetical i believe that most people who watch my videos generally agree with me you might dis disagree on certain points but the thrust of it is women a psyop a multi-pronged psyop it's not one thing it's multi-pronged it's multifaceted this psyop and it's to butter us up and to manipulate us into a one world system so you've got social credit digital id you're basically controlled you're enslaved but they'll do it in such a way over a period of time using various devices and methods and tools that the public will generally accept it without fighting back it's been proven in experiments that 70 percent of people or thereabouts give or take are completely bullshittable now i think most people watching this fall into the 30 percent there ain't to to various levels and so most people um that they'll believe and go along with anything so hypothetical situation then um if you like say like me agree with what i've been saying in society and i've seen this in engineering i started work in september or well, full time i, I got a um, friday job after school and i got weekend work and holiday work be before i left school but my first full-time job is in september 85 and i've been basically had dirty hands jobs ever since and i've seen because I take note of these things, a phenomena, and it's I think it's called culture and mediocrity. And it's not all encompassing. There is exceptions because I've got to state this because whenever you say something like this, people jump down your throat and you and say to you, "You said everybody." Well, I'm saying no such thing. But there is a culture and mediocrity, whereby if anybody's got any kind of skill or anything about them, right, they're kept where they are. Because if they're raised, they present themselves as a threat to the people above because they're probably smarter, savvier and more capable than the people higher up the ladder. So they see them as a threat. So keep them, keep them on the shop floor, earning the money for us. You know, and keep, keep them there. We don't want them in here. They'll make too many changes. We'll, we'll, be, on the, we'll be up the road. So keep, keep them down there and that's it. And very often, not in every case, but the people who rise through the ranks are arse kissers, brown noses. They are. And this happens with everything. I remember reading loads of times in the Battle of Britain and the air war in general, both sides. Um, you've got sergeant pilots, NCOs, and they were proficient at what they did, which was flying fighters. And they wouldn't accept promotion because they knew if they did, they'd end up flying a desk. And they don't want that. They, don't, they didn't want it. So they was quite prepared to stay on that pay scale, that pay level, and do what they did best, which was with, with, the, with the thumb on the gun button. So this has always happened in every industry and every profession. So the people who tend to go up and want to, are usually brown noses, arse kisses, yes men, and people who can do you know, they talk, talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk, and they manage to talk their way into anything. Billy bullshitters. So they tend to be very often, not always, but in these positions of authority and power. And um, so this hypothetical situation, right? You imagine your 
an intelligence switched on, a rare psychiatrist. And from what I've seen over the last three, three years, what I believe to be true, you're a truther. How could you not be? It's either that or you say, what I've been talking about in a thousand videos is a figment of my imagination and it's not happening. And I don't believe that, else I wouldn't put my name to it. So you're a psychiatrist and you're a truther and you can see what's going on. Now them higher up, them yes men, like I say, them bum kissers. So they just do what they're told, following orders. And half of you on that, half of them on that pay level as the psychiatrist is on. They, they just they just follow orders as well. They do what they're told. They don't question it. Because get paid every month. Could, could be a lot worse. Just put up with it. So, but you're a psychiatrist too. You're a truther. You don't believe the narrative from what you've seen and experienced. Now, let's say you referred a patient and this patient has um, got different problems which is your job to try and sort out and, and get to the bottom of and deal with. But let's say this patient says that there is a couple of bloodline families in charge of, of the world, you know, different bloodlines, but not too many of them, and they tend to in, inter, interbreed. And also that what's happened over the last three years has been a psyop on different levels, trying to get us all into this one world governed system and your boss who's the brown nouser the yes man the narrative follower has told you to uh, make a judgment on this patient who believes that what would you do because if you lie it, it's an awful position to be in and I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody but if you say, actually, this patient is right, and what's going to happen? Well, you, you, you are going to work again, am you? I'm not doing that. It's not going to happen. But you're telling the truth. They are right. So let's say you play the game, their game, and say, no, he's a tin for that nut job. Like, you know, deal with him. Then you've falsely accused somebody of coming out with nonsense but actually them telling the gospel truth so what what a situation to be in what a situation to be in it's it's uh and you can it, all, all i know it's happened so what would you do i wouldn't fancy being in a position um lastly before i sign off because i'm on 18 minutes the memes i don't take them seriously some of them are visceral, right on target. In one picture, they say more than a thousand pages could. Absolutely bang on. Some of them are stupid. Some of them are wrong. They're there to make a point. Some of their feet are laugh at, if that appeals to your particular sense of humour, or not. But don't take them too seriously. Take them, if you're an adult, Take them in the spirit that they're intended. Now, don't dissect them. That, that's not the point of them being posted. You, you know, like I say, some of them make a point. They might not be absolutely accurate. But what's the point it's making? Surely you can see that. Anyway, for today, what do I always say? God bless. God bless.